As we gather for worship, we acknowledge that our churches and homes are located on the unceded traditional territories of Coast Salish peoples, including the Keitsi, Kwantlen, Kwikwitlam, Stalo, Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish and Musqueam First Nations. May we work to learn, build and deepen right relations of thanksgiving and hope, now and into the future. May God bless us all with love. Welcome to the weirdest Advent ever. Who knew we would be here gathering together online still, and yet sensing God's Spirit connecting and uniting us even when we cannot be together in person? Yet here we are, at the threshold of four weeks of preparing our hearts for the advent of God's new life, arriving anew into our lives and into our world today. So whether you are part of a community of faith near or far, or you have found us online, welcome here. We are delighted that you have tuned in, and we trust that God's love meets you right where you are. This worship series is inspired by Worship Design Studio and is a collaboration of Reverend Leland Shields and Leslie Fairley of Golden Ears United Church, Reverend Julie Lebrun and Reverend Jen Swanson from Inlet United Church, and myself, Reverend Jan Beale from Como Lake United Church. Today, especially, we welcome Reverend Jen back. She's been on sabbatical for about three uh, months, and so we are so glad to have her back uh, on the team. This Advent, we lift up the power of music to light up the night even when we cannot sing together in person. And we raise up the strength of believing and trusting God's promises even when we cannot yet see them lived out. Hope, peace, joy, and love will be the familiar touchstones of Advent that will ground us each week as we gather around scripture stories that center us in the wonder of God's coming to us in Jesus. We begin our Advent journey with the call to be awake, alert, aware, and readying ourselves to behold the new life into which God is leading us. So welcome to Advent worship. This Advent, we're looking to hear words of comfort, of challenge, and of good news. The prophet Isaiah and the four gospel authors were writing in times when people needed desperately to hear all of these as well. This first week, Isaiah the prophet and Mark the gospel writer who published first reassure the people that good news is beginning. And yet they both say, make yourself ready, raise your voices, change your hearts, get ready to be transformed, because now is the time. Let us embrace hope that God is at work and guiding us to do what needs to be done to bring more light into the world. I believe in the sun I believe in the sun Even when, even when it's not shining I believe in the sun I believe in the sun Even when, even when Ooh. 
Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of untiring hope, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle. Even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt, ignite the flame of hope within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us face the longer nights of darkness and embrace glimpses of light in this time for rebirth. You are invited to now light your Advent One candle of hope at home at this time. Good morning, and welcome to Children and Family Time. I must admit, it's feeling a little weird not calling you all up to the front and having you race down the aisle and, and gather around for, for story and a conversation. It feels a little strange, and I'm, I'm missing you. But we get to do this this way, and it's a new adventure. This week, during our first Sunday in Advent, and Advent is that time of waiting and preparing, and sometimes waiting can be really, really challenging and difficult, and it feels like it takes forever to happen. And so this week, we mark it as the week of hope, and I'm wondering, what gives you hope? I know one of the things that I've been noticing on my walks around my neighborhood is something that gives me hope because it tells me that something's coming. Something great is coming. And would you believe it is Christmas lights? What do you think? It's pretty amazing, but... All of the houses in my neighborhood start to put up Christmas lights, and it lets me know that something's coming, and it brings light into this glimmer of, of winter, although we're not quite at winter, but we, it gets darker earlier, and we wake up in the dark, and we go to school, and it's just becoming light, and we come home from school, and it gets dark so fast. 
and we flip on that switch and instead of the porch lights, we get Christmas lights. They seem to sparkle in the rain and the mist and heaven forbid the snow, but it'll come. And it's that, it's that knowledge that something's coming. And so I have some homework for you this week. One, because it's Advent one, you can put up your Christmas lights. And two, maybe go for a walk. Go for a walk around the neighborhood and see all of the different kinds of displays. Some will be neatly and ordered lights around the rim of the house, and others will be a great big wild display of all kinds of Christmas elves and Santas and maybe a nativity scene or Christmas trees will be in the windows. But the lights will be shining and reminding us that there's something coming. Something great is coming. There is a baby on its way. And he will be called Jesus. And God loved us so much that God wanted to experience life with us. That human experience, that experience of joy and happiness and sadness and fear and hunger and thirst. But God wanted to experience all of that along with us. And so every year we remember as we invite this baby into our lives, something great is coming. Amen. This little light of mine, well, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, well, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Again, this little light of mine, well, I'm gonna let it shine, let me hear you now. This little light of mine, well, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, say let it shine, let it shine, let it From Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 8. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely, the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Thanks be to God.
Our worship series this Advent calls on the power of sung poetry that inspires those who hear it to a brighter tomorrow. It has been a difficult time, this pandemic, for singing to be restricted. In its absence, we have been reminded just how important it is to sing together. Indeed, music has often been a soundtrack of hope. Someday, we will once again be able to join our voices in song in our sanctuaries. But for now, rather than turn away from music in sorrow, we will turn toward the story of music and deepen our appreciation of its role in healing, in change, and in reconciliation. This morning, we present to you the theme anthem for this series that features the poetry of an anonymous Jewish person during the Holocaust. These words were found scrawled on a wall and have now been shared with the world, reminding us of the resilience of hope. May we never forget what can happen when evil is allowed to go unchecked. And may we always use our music, our art, our poetry, even our simple acts of kindness as inspiration to create goodness, not evil, in the world. I believe in the sun. Even when it's not shining. I believe in love. Even when I don't feel it. I believe in God. Even when God is silent. I believe. I, I believe. believe. I believe. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 15. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, He saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, This time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. I went downstairs and there was a man sitting and he just said, I want to know, do all of you like to sing? If people are robbed of freedom, they want to be creative, and they were. Where this music is powerful, it represents a threat. And it was a tremendous challenge to have the Germans right there in front of us and tell them to their face. It was something which made us strong. It has given us a resistance against our fate. Doing a performance was not entertainment. It was a fight for life. This world is requiem. Put all of us into another world. This was not the world with the Nazis. This was our world. These were hours of pure joy, as much as you can call joy in camp. Here they were, surrounded by man's worst, and these Jewish prisoners were determined to remind everyone of man's best. And I brought the Verdi here because I want to assure these people that we've heard them. I 
I don't think the soul has to be nourished by anything but by heavenly music. The, the soul doesn't need anything else. The soul doesn't need anything else. For many of us, music transcends and is the embodiment of hope. That is the main theme of the documentary Defiant Requiem, the story of an artistic uprising that took place in a place where one would expect hope to be least present, the desolate and death-filled place called Terezin, a Nazi internment camp 40 miles west of Prague. The camp was basically a holding place for Jewish people before they were stuffed into trains and sent, unbeknownst to them, to their deaths. In the weeks and months that they waited, in conditions most of us cannot even begin to imagine, hope rose. A young conductor named Raphael Schachter began to hold secret late-night gatherings during which, using an old piano and a single score booklet that he had packed in his suitcase with him, he taught 120 or so of the prisoners to sing. Just imagine. Amateur singers learn to sing by ear and by heart one of the most difficult choral pieces ever written, Verdi's Requiem. In appalling circumstances, in late night rehearsals, uh, these helped them to cope. These rehearsals brought them together, kept them alive. People looked forward to the gatherings all day as they worked often with little or no food in terrible conditions amidst illness and death and fear and tragedy. One person in the film said, when common language can no longer come close to our feelings, that's when art begins. Another survivor said that her stomach even stopped growling when they gathered to sing at night because her soul was nourished by the heavenly music. You don't need anything else, she said. You don't need anything else. I believe even when. Hope is a fundamental impulse in life. Sometimes we hope because it's all we have left. But in Advent, we hope because we know that God, who is love, has already done so much and is doing and will continue to do going forward. And we know, we know to expect more. And so we wait. There is so much happening in Mark's gospel reading today. There is John actively baptizing dozens and dozens and dozens of people in the river, all the while telling them, but wait, there's more. I baptize you with water, but he, the one who is coming, will baptize you with the Spirit. And then it happens. John baptizes Jesus, and as Jesus rises up out of the water, the text, text says the heavens were torn apart, and the Spirit descended on him, and a voice said to him, You are my beloved, and with you I am well pleased. And then it says the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness for 40 days, which in biblical language doesn't actually mean 40 days, but means a very, very long time. And all sorts of hard things happened. He was tempted by Satan, and there were wild beasts, although it just says he was with them, so we don't know if that was good or bad. And then wonderful things happened, like angels attending to him. So in other words, Jesus went through some things for a long time, and some of it was good and some of it was not. Sounds rather like life, doesn't it? And when he came back to the Galilee, Jesus came back not in despair, but instead proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. By the way, the biblical word repentance or metanoia means more than to regret or be sorry for something as it means today. It means 
to have a complete change of heart. It means to turn your focus, your attention, back toward God. Turn back toward God, no matter what's been going on, and believe in the good news. I believe even when. The kingdom of God has come near. For the people who gathered each night in secret and at great risk in that dank underground chamber to raise their voices in beauty and unity and human connection and in love, the kingdom of God came near. That's the thing about hope and especially about Advent hope. It is a redirection from our individual situations to the collective. It's a time of refocusing ourselves toward God, toward love. And Advent hope requires more than just nice words and wishes. It's active. It's visceral. Words have to take on flesh, and we are invited over and over and over again, no matter what life throws at us, to join together in the spirit and to participate in new creation, to make something new, to light more light, to bring that kingdom near over and over again. Sometimes it's called apocalyptic hope. The word apocalypse actually means to reveal or disclose. And there are times when what is revealed or disclosed has to come to light before we are forced into situations where the imagination bubbles up. Um, that will, the imagination that will build a new world. Sometimes the difficult, hard, horrible times give birth to new things or new ways of seeing, new beliefs and new consciousness. Dying and rising, dying and rising. It's how this all works. And it's hard work. Most of us cannot imagine the atrocities and the horror that led to those souls being in that dark place in Terezine in the first place. And we pray that out of that terrible time in our human history comes a learning that we will not go there ever again. In our current context, it's hard to, albeit in a much different way, being stuck inside separately and not able to be together. It's hard not to be in our church buildings, to sing and to pray and to do what we usually do when we seek comfort and light. It's horribly hard to not sit with loved ones in hospital or to be able to even visit each other in our homes or gather our extended families together. There's a whole lot that is difficult and sad going on right now. And there is a universal energy that feels heavy right now. When you think about it, you have millions and millions of people around the world feeling stressed and scared and energetically out of sorts. Well, then it's literally in the air. <laughs> it's no wonder we feel this way because we are actually connected energetically to the whole body, to each other. And what apocalyptic hope does is reveal the cracks, the places in our world that need healing, the systems that are broken, the beliefs that no longer serve. And the good news is we see some of it now more clearly than we perhaps did before. And what that means is like the artistic uprising of voices making stunningly beautiful music long ago, something new will arise. Something new will be born of this. If we do as Jesus asked and redirect ourselves toward God, toward love. I believe even when. What has been revealed for you during this challenging time, I wonder? What new and wonderful things have emerged or begun to emerge? What voices are now being heard that maybe weren't before? What new relationships have been formed? Who have you talked to or connected with virtually that maybe you haven't connected with before, often, or ever? What has become possible 
because of the struggle of this pandemic that wasn't even considered before. Where is the light getting in? The kingdom of God has come near, my friends, over and over and over again. As we move into this time of sacred waiting for the Christ light to be born anew within us and among us, Emmanuel, God with us, may we hold on to each other in love. May we hold on to that which gives us life. May we let go of what does not, and may we hope that in our own dying and rising, we move more deeply into the fullness of life. Amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Have tried 
Lie deep still pools of quietness The dwelling place of God Meet me in the stillness, Lord Be the air I breathe Meet me in the stillness, Lord Free me to receive Advent God, we give you thanks that you come to us with love and clarity and grace, often in surprising and unexpected ways, as you did those two millennia ago. You come with daring hope even when our nights of chaos and fear, our times of confusion and pain, our days of doubt and uncertainty feel long and difficult. Grant us courage to believe and trust and to be ready to live your hope, even as we see despair around us. And even as we pray this day, help us to trust your promise to pray within us, even when we are not able to call up the words that express our heart's longing for our world, our families, and our own lives. In this hope and trust, we pray today. We pray for our frontline workers in this time of increased COVID cases. And we pray for all those who are ill with the virus and for all those who provide care and support. We pray for all those who suffer loss in this time, loss of employment, loss of connection, loss of health, loss of a loved one. May each one experience your grace through acts of kindness and generosity from others and through the work of your Spirit within. Holy One, bless our homes and families and relationships at this time with your peace that passes understanding, with love that edges out fear, and with learning that helps to build healthy, loving communication. Jesus, our brother and friend, help us to sense your steadying and empowering presence as we seek to embody your hope, peace, joy, and love in our lives and be the light you have commissioned us to be. Holy Spirit, fire of life, 
and teacher in our lives. Light us up from the inside, that we may be awake and alert to the ways you call each of us to bear your love in the world. We pray in Jesus, our light, the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you today to fill the night with hope. Think of the gifts that God has given you and some way that you would like to use those gifts in the coming weeks to share your love with God and others. Your financial gifts, gifts of prayer, gifts of actions to bring hope to others. If you are part of Golden Ears Inlet or Coma Lake United Church, you can make your financial gifts. They can be given by check or electronically. For anyone who would like to support our ministry, information on giving can be found on the website for each congregation. What other offerings can you make this week? Perhaps your local food bank or tour drive needs your offering. This week, as a specific way to light up the night with hope, we invite you to send a card of hope to frontline workers in this pandemic time. Take a moment to offer to God these gifts, actions of care, prayer, and the resources that can help your community and the world as we sing together. Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to man. I thought how as the day had come, the bell
chime, a chant sublime. Peace on earth, good will to man. And so we go into this first week of Advent to wait, to hope, and above all else, to love something new into being. And as we do that, may the grace of God go with you. May the light of Christ shine through you. And may the Holy Spirit keep you, now and always. Amen. The time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing to days. Love the guest is on the way. Furrows be glad the earth is bare. One more seed is planted there. Give up your strength. Oh